My dear blessed friend, uh, my name is Dr. Dr. Prophet Professor Angelo Gashie. Today I want to share with you a message which I have entitled Where is God? My dear blessed friend, today I'm sharing this message on where is God. Because so many have been asking me why, Professor Gashie, you are not joining us on live sessions. And I want to start joining people on live sessions if possible once a week. I believe that those who want to listen to this message are those who want to understand and become the best and highest versions of yourself. So if, if that's what your intention are, then you are in the right place. Another person who wants to become, who wants to lead a purpose-driven life so that you stop being taught this way and that way by the perspectives of life, then you are in the right place. Again, this message is for somebody who is looking for to live a life of freedom, to stop being tied up by religious dogma, and you are hungry in different areas of your life. Some people, they have been asking me, Prophet Gashie, I don't know how to make money. I'm living in urgent poverty. My life is in total chaos, it is in shambles. What do I do? And now, today, I'm sharing with you the answer. Because I cannot be able to, silver and gold I do not have. But what I have, I'm giving unto you. Rather than me giving you a fish on Facebook, it's better for me to show you how to go and fish for yourself. Because when I give you five rand, ten rand, I have not really helped you. I'm actually becoming an enabler. But when I show you how to become the best and highest version of yourself, you are going to go and you are going to go rejoicing like that man who was sitting by the gate called Beautiful. And he was lame and he was living with enablers. Some people, yes, they may have the money, but they are suicidal. Others are having needles on their arms. Others are in different kinds of areas of their life. They are so disordered, and they don't know what to do. So this is a message for somebody who is different, who is hungry for the word. And the word is going to be made flesh today in different areas of our life. If I can share with you briefly about my own life story. I'm a professor at the University of KwaZulu Natal. I was born in the Kenyan slums, as you can see. This is a slum of abject poverty. But like the prodigal son, I woke up to myself and I said, I cannot continue doing this anymore. I cannot continue with this lifestyle of doing the same thing over and over again. And I woke up to myself. And when I was still in the pig's pen, I said, I am going to my father's house. And the pigs could not hold me back. And now I'm doing amazing things. I go from city to city. I share this life empowering messages with people who are from the poor to the rich. Because even Nicodema was a, a teacher of the law, but yet he went to Jesus at, at night to, because he was groveling in the darkness. I share this bread of life even people who are destitute. I give them the bread and I use it as an opportunity to teach them the bread that will not uh, go bad. Because remember the Samaritan woman, she was going every day to get water because that water was not able to quench her thirst until she met the prophet who gave her the water of life. And that is what I'm doing today. My dear blessed friend, as a prophet of the Lord, I've been inspired by this message of pyrogenesis. Pyro stands for fire, and Genesis stands for beginning. Therefore, I'm sharing with people how to have a new beginning. You have to go through a baptism of the fire to enjoy that new beginning. It's a manifesto for Christ's awakening, whereby we are going to experience this pyrogenesis cosmic creator. We are going to experience pyrogenesis cosmic generator. We are going to experience pyrogenesis cosmic originator. And... Ultimately, we are going to tap into the pyrogenesis miracle power of divine providence in the process. So, in essence, when I'm telling you about the, this concept of where is God, we want to understand that the Bible is actually an encryption. And an encryption, you need to decipher for you to be able to encrypt the message. If I send you an email which has been encrypted, only the receiver can be able to encrypt that message. It's a kind of uh, cryptology. You've heard about crypto coins. 
a crypto coin is a currency, but you cannot touch it in the physical realm. But only a person who understands how to decipher and to encrypt that crypto, crypto coin can be able to turn it into cash. And that is what is happening with the Bible. Bible is made up of metaphors, just the same way we use metaphors in computers. When I'm telling you, save your work, download your images, upload your work, Zoom, all those are metaphors that we use in day-to-day -day life that are used on computers to make understanding of the computer easy. So the Bible itself is written in metaphors so that those who have the spirit of as young as that one of a child will be able to decipher the metaphors. So that those ones who have a cloud hard heart will not be able to get anywhere. The Bible is made up of allegories. Allegories are another form of metaphors that we need to decipher in order to understand the big meaning. So when I ask you what do you see, somebody will look at this image, one person will tell me they see a duck. Another person will look at this image and they tell me they see a rabbit. It's up to your own perception. How you perceive is what will be your understanding. So the Bible in these stories, within sacred texts, are not merely historical accounts in the Bible, but they are profound psychological and spiritual dramas that reveal the essence of pyrogenesis in form of pyrogenesis cosmic creator, pyrogenesis cosmic generator, and pyrogenesis cosmic originator. The Bible tells us, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let him have dominion over the earth. So God created man in his own image and in the image of God, he, God and in the image of God, he created he, him. My friend, you can see from there that God is a manifestation of you so that you are the manifestation of God because you are the image bearer of God. In, in, your, in, his, in, in his image and likeness, he created he, him, himself. So when you're asking me, where is God? God is within you. God is you. God is not a far away separate being. You are God in essence. God in the context of pyrogenesis is your consciousness, your awareness. God is I am. In other words, you are I amness. God is inside all of you. He's in me, he's in you, he's in all of us. And God said to Moses, I am who I am. Lord, it's none other than your consciousness. He said to Moses, say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. So look at that. So I am who I am. I am is the self-definition of the Lord. He is the unconditioned, changeless reality. I am. So when you are saying I am, you are actually saying I am God. When you say I am poor, you are saying the God in me is poor. When you say I am rich, you are saying the God in me is rich. And he cannot contradict himself because his name is I am. And you are the I am. So when you are saying I am, you are actually beginning by acknowledging the God essence in you, and then it's going to be made manifest. So if you recognize that God and man are one, it implies that God is not distant, but intimately connected to your very essence. So, what am I saying? If God and man are one, then God can never be so far off as even to be near. For nearness implies separation. Jesus himself, he said, the Father and I are one. So you and the Father are one because Jesus is the enlightened reason. Jesus is your own enlightened reason. So you are the I am. You are that Jesus. You are that God. The power of the pyrogenesis. I'm going to explain, I'm going to explain the word, the name of Jehovah. Jehovah, in the Hebrew, they call him yod he vau he As you can see, they, they write in, starting from this, going that, that, that direction. That's how the Hebrew uh, is written. The two prominent figures in these ancient stories are God, 
namely Jehovah and his son Jesus. Today I'm only going to look at Jehovah and then next week I will look at Jesus. The ancient Hebrews employed symbols rather than a spoken language, much like a mathematician uses symbols to convey complex concepts. Jehovah, God's name was represented as Yod He Val He. Now I want us to use this opportunity to break down these symbols. And what does that name Yod He Val He actually mean to our life and what is its significance? The first letter Yod symbolizes the hand or the fundamental seed. It's a metaphor, an allegory, a cryptology for the creative hand of the phylogenesis. Unlike the anthropoid ape, you know, an ape like a monkey, which he only uses his hands to eat or to walk. Man uses his hands for other purposes, to fashion and to mold. So your represents the power to shape and direct your own reality. So that distinguishes us from other creatures. The hand shapes, it molds, it builds, and it enables you to express yourself fully, as you can see. This hand is the hand of the builder and the director, which is guiding and shaping your world, as you can see there. So that, that is what our hand actually means. The second letter, he, signifies a window or an eye, which symbolizes perception. What do you see? It is the ability to visualize and to see in the subjective. So what are you seeing right now? You have to see it in, inside yourself before you can see it outside yourself. So as a man thinketh in his own heart, so is he. So that window of how do you perceive your, your situation, how do you perceive your condition, how do you perceive yourself right now, is what is the first he in terms of your he bow he is the I. The third letter, bow, is a nail. So that it binds the elements together. What is the nail going to do? It's going to bind the word yod and he to become one. So bow is a conjunction like there you can use and in the Hebraic tongue. So if I want to say you and I, I, I put bow, you bow I. So I, and stands for bow. Woman and man is and. So I want to say you and I, I put bow in the middle and it binds them together. So bow signifies your capacity to embody and sustain your desired state by feeling as though you are already what you wish to be. So what do you wish to be? So what you're desiring to be? Remember your hand is the one that is creating your reality. Key is the window or the perception you have about yourself. And then bow will bind those two together. And nothing will put asunder. The fourth and final letter is he again is another window, but this time it is representing the external objective world that reflects your internal state. He said, yod, the hand of the director who is directing his or her own life. We said, he is your inner window, your inner window, and then we use a nail, bow to nail them together so that no man can put us under of what you have seen yourself to be. And then we are putting another he, which means that whatever you have seen yourself to be will be represented on your external world. And it cannot be any other way because no one can put a thunder of what you have already perceived yourself to be. So in this cosmic framework, yon represents your core awareness, your I amness. So yon is I am. Jehovah is I am. You are I am, therefore you are God, which is all consciousness flows. He embodies your imaginative power to perceive within yourself, in your sacred chamber, what you want to become. And no one can stop you from becoming what you want to be. So don't, we cannot blame somebody saying, no, no one. Bow is the nail that binds your he. 
so that no one can separate you from what you have seen yourself to be. That's why the Bible tells us, what can separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus? Is it adversity? Is it hell? Is it, is it friends? Is it a relationship? None of those things have the power to separate you and he once you have nailed it together. And he symbolizes the objective world. Your inner state will be manifested. As a man thinketh, so is he. Your mind is the first one to go. You say, I want to go to the university. That's what Netesh told me. He wants to study his, to do his uh, master's degree in America. His mind was the first thing to go. And then his body followed. So you have first of all to make up your mind. Even me when I was in the slum, my mind said, I cannot continue sitting here with the slum mentality, with the pig's mentality, when there is so much to eat in my father's house. And the moment I made up my mind, I was still in the pig's pen, I was still in the slum, but the pigs could not hold me back because my mind was already yawned he, vow, and then all was remaining was the last he. And my outer reality is a manifestation that I am the prodigal son who was in the slum and now I am transformed my life. So why am I telling you that you are God? Because you are the living tabernacle. That's what the book of Corinthians tells us. You are the temple of God. Moses was instructed to build a tabernacle. But people, they always imagine in terms of a tabernacle made of gold and wood. But the tabernacle that Moses was being directed to build was this. You are the tabernacle of God. So if you are the tabernacle of God, God is dwelling inside of you. Therefore, God is not outside there. God is not outside there where you imagine in the heaven. He is in the heaven of your own mind. Therefore, what you are going to imagine about yourself is going to become your reality. So today I was sharing with you the name Jehovah. Yod He Bao He is the name by which all things are made. And without it, there was nothing that is made. Thus, Yod He Bao He embodies the process of creation, becoming aware of your desires, perceiving them as their reality. Whether anybody will agree with you, or not is none of your business as long as you are feeling them as true. And then you allow the external world to align with this inner truth and that is none of your business. How that is going to be made a reality is none of your business. Yours is to declare beyond I am this, he, I've declared myself I'm going to do that and vow to nail them together so that no one can put a thunder. No one can I say, I tell you, you cannot become what you want to become. When the people they tell you, you are born in the slums, you are poor, you can never do it. No one in your family has ever done it. You, 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 a woman cannot do it. Uh, a black person can, has never done it. Uh, somebody in Africa can, cannot do it. You tell them that is none of their business because you are going to shut the door. And you are going to go into the inner chamber. And it's going to become a reality. Because that is what we have been directed to do. By integrating the principles of pyrogenesis, that is the fire and the beginning that I'm going to be sharing with people, we are going to unlock cosmic creators. We are the creators of our life. We are the generators of our life. And we are the originators of our life. And we are going to unlock divine power within ourselves. And we are going to embrace this process and watch our desires come to a fruition through miraculous interplay of the consciousness and the cosmic law. And you know why I'm sharing these messages again is when I go to Facebook, people they are telling me, send me money, help me, help me. You are not a helpless worm. You are not a helpless creature. You are not supposed to see others as though they are giants and you are a worm. 
you, it's your perception about yourself that needs to change. Even if I send you 100 rands today, tomorrow you are going to be even more poor. And we've seen it with people who are doing lotto. Because you have, first of all, to change your mind and become that rich person inside before that 100 rand can bear fruit. And that's why I'm sharing these messages because people, they become haters. They say, why are you not giving us money? Why are you dressing so well? Why are you not sending us money? Even if I send you money, even if I, I do anything for you, you'll still continue being helpless because in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and you are that God. And if that is the word, it's going to become flesh. It's up to you to become that God in your own life and embrace that the power to create your destiny is in you. And you shall not have no other God beside yourself. When you are asking other person to do help you, you are telling them that they are your God. And he is a jealousy God. You, I will have no other God because he is a jealousy God. The one who is within me wants me to have no other. I will bow to no other man. So my friends, I'm sharing this message for those who want to change their lives. This message is not for the faint-hearted. This message is for anybody who wants to tap to the greatness, become the best and highest version of yourself. Yes, it's not about money alone. I have seen people, celebrities are committing suicide, others are on needles, others are throwing themselves down building. So we cannot say that we are going to count to happiness in terms of money alone. Happiness is about having a, an abundant life. He came to give you life and life more abundantly. An abundant life is when I can wake up in the morning and I say, this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. And I go about doing my father's business. And what is your father's business? Your father's business is to awaken to your highest and best potential. Your father's business is to use your talent. And what is that talent? The talent of awakening to your potential so that you stop worshipping other gods. So that you stop going to being lied to by other religious dogmas that are telling you God is in the heaven, that are telling you if you give us money, we are going to pray for you and do magic. No. You, God is in you. God is inside of you. You are God. Jesus himself said, you are God. And if that is the truth, then start embodying that truth. Become God in your own life. And when you're doing that, ask yourself, who are you becoming? Because you can get the money and you will still be unhappy. If at all your destination is only to become rich. Rich is good. I want us to be very wealthy. But there's much more in terms of riches. There's another... Abraham was told, I'll make your name great. So let us become great men and women. Greatness in terms of how do you define your own greatness? What do you want to say that you did with your talent? Your one talent, your four talent, or your five talent? Remember, one of them, he was afraid. And what did he do? He buried his talent and he exposed his fear. And when the master came, told him, you, unfaithful servant, I wish would have put it in F and B because at least I would have found 1% of that one talent. Because when that one talent, the master took it to F and B, F and B, they told him, this talent is only worth 0 0.5. It has lost value because it has been buried for the last five years by your unfaithful servant. So people are burying their talent and then their work is to keep on borrowing, saying you are not good, you are not doing this for us, instead of just using that one talent and use it to your maximum. You are not being called to be another person. The one who had four multiplied, it was eight. The one who had five, it became ten. And the master knew their capacity. He did not ask the one who had one to make it a thousand. But if he could, then it would have been made the master more joyous. So my dear blessed friend, your past, your future, and your present is shaping your life. And as we can see from that name of yod he bao he namely Jehovah, from you can be able to change your future. 
you can be able to change your future by saying, I am wealthy. I am prosperous. I am joyous. I am fulfilled. I am happy. I am going to use my talent. I am going to heal the deaf so that they can hear the word. I am going to heal the blind so that they can see the prosperity that is within them. I am going to tell people to wake up and stop sitting on the gate called beautiful and rise up and walk. That is what we are going, we are going to do with our talent. When we say we are going to heal people, we are going to make them to, to tap into their best and highest expression. So these are metaphorical terms when you say, I'm going to heal your eyes, I'm going to and block your ears because I want you to know your greatness is within you and is not within another person. So ask yourself, what do I want to do from now? And then that is going to be your yod. And then he will be the eyes that you see yourself as becoming. Close your eyes to anything that tells you you cannot be that. Shut your ears to anybody who tells you that you cannot achieve what you have already seen inside yourself. And then bind it with that nail that no man can put asunder. And then the she of objective world will become a reality. And that is none of your business how it's going to be. So in the next week, I'll share with you what it means to be a, to sin so that we stop being lied to and being told to sin is when uh, you are not living in moral. It has nothing to do with morality. Jesus was mixing with a prostitute. He was going to the harlot. He was eating with unclean hands. She was doing things during the Sabbath, healing people. So that is to sin is to miss the mark. What is righteousness? Because people, they want to bind you with this definition of concepts that are not true. What it means to be saved? People, they go around saying, I'm saved, and they don't know what they are talking about. They talk about the devil. What is the devil? What is to forgive? I will show you the similarity between the New and Old Testament. For example, Jesus is Joshua and Moses. I will show you how to overcome and how to come out of this three dimension of view, of the other view, and we are going to start operating on a four dimensional spiritual view. And we are going to operate the Sabbath. The Sabbath is the time when you are rested and you do not care whether it's going to happen or not because you are rested in the eternal word and that word cannot be put asunder. And then you know what we are going to do? We are going to stop living like the chicken. You know, the chicken. They are always uh, down there, cluck, 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 you know? They are always talking and, and they, they, because they not believe in themselves, they can't fly. But we are going to soar like eagles and we are not going to grow away. And, because the eagles, they make love in the air. So many people have been living in a cage. I went to Kruger National Park and I saw a lion in a cage and I asked them, they were being fed. And then when they were being fed, they were put a tree there to mimic as though they are in the forest. And then when the zookeeper finished feeding them, he closed the cage. I asked the zookeeper, why are you closing the cage? If at all, the only place this lion knows since it was born in the cage. He told me, Prophet Gashie, we close the cage because inside the lion is roaring. It knows that it was made for greatness. My friends, I want people to get out of the cage and they live to their best and highest expression in life. I'm going to, to end with some words of a man who at the end of his life he said, if I had a life to live my life all over again, what would I do? He said, I would not be afraid to make more mistakes next time. In fact, I would relax more. Next, I would be sillier in my next trip. I would be less hygienic and I would even be picking my nose. In fact, I would do few things that I would take seriously. I would take more chances. I would climb more mountains of life and not be afraid of climbing them so that he can see the summit of what he could have been. I will swim in more rivers, whether they are clean or dirty. I will enjoy more sunsets because they are for free. I will go to places that I've never been before. It doesn't mean, mean physically mean going physical. You can go with your mind. 
no one can stop you right now to going into Jordan where Nitesh is. I would have more actual problems than imaginary ones. I was also one who was constantly worrying. If I had to live my life again, I would try to have more beautiful moments back to back. I would have nothing else by, but wonderful moments side by side. Instead, I was living my life always ahead of time. I was one of those people who never went anywhere without a thermometer, a water bottle, a raincoat, and a parachute. Next time, I'll travel lighter. If I had another opportunity to live my life again, I would play more with people, with children, and I would use my talent. I would not bury my talent, and I would love more. But he was on his exit. My dear friend, you have an opportunity to accumulate the right knowledge to supply with the tools of this journey. The wisdom to assure you that you are going to use this journey for the best and highest version of yourself. Compassion to help those who are living in the pig's pen and in the cages and in the chicken mentality. Harmony to accept and bring harmony where there is disharmony. Creativity to use your talent. Strength to move forward and press forward to the mark that hides in Christ. Peace to keep you centered. And joy to sing and to dance even when things are not working out. And love to become the best and highest expression of yourself. And unity to bring peace and oneness where there is discord. The study of love has brought me to the study of life. And to live in love is to live in life. And to live in life is to live in love. My friends, life is a God gives to you. And how you are going to use your life is your gift to God. I pray that you are going to make it better. Let us develop a sense of philosophy of which we are going to live by, an attitude of we are going to make it, whether they are Nicaeans, whether they are people who say you cannot do it, genderism, sexism, ageism, racism cannot stop your he bow he. And we are going to engage in activities that will bring our desired results. And we are going to study our results from time to time to see whether we are using our talent correctly. And we are going to live our life fully and experience that as more abundant life. In summary, these are the disciplines with which you must apply your talent with a sense of urgency and unshakable resolve. May the pieces of your life puzzle come together smoothly and may you enjoy the picture of a finished masterpiece as a result of unwavering commitment to mastering the basics of love that you are yod he bow he jehovah i am i amness let your effort result give cause to those who will one day gather to pass judgment on your existence and to speak only of this simple praise well done good and faithful servant you have been faithful now i can trust you with more i wish you influence i wish you treasures of the soul and the mind and the path and hope that I've shared with you today has given you a sense of extra perception in sharpening your skills and in making your life unique. Let us go and touch somebody else. Namaste. Thank you, my dear blessed friend. If you have a question, you can ask me. Otherwise, I'm going to stop sharing. Stay blessed. Yes. Anyone with a question? Nitesh? Uh, thank you, Dr. Gashi. I was uh, listening to your your seminar. It's very good, yes, yes. very uh, insightful. Yes, yes. Yes. Um, I don't have any questions at this moment. Yes. But uh, it's very insightful. Do you want us to see you, or you don't want to be seen for today? I can be seen, no problem. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I must use that because you might you might not be at work. I would like to see you. Let me see if I can see you. Uh, Yes. Can you see me now? Yes, I'm seeing you now. Yes, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm well, thanks. Yourself? Yes, you went to work. What time is there in Jordan? Uh, no, no, I'm back in Saudi Arabia now. Oh, uh, I went to... Okay. Yes, I went to work and then I came back and I slept. Yeah, the, the times are like that. Where is Jordan? So you work? 
Jordan is from me from where I live. It's two thousand kilometers away. That's very far away. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, you're telling me more offline. Okay, so you are going to Jordan. Yes, you are. You are in work. What time is it there? No, no. Uh, now it is at uh ten to eight. In the evening. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm yes. very glad to see you and to have a chat. Yes, thanks. I hope you have been blessed by the message. Yes, it was very insightful. Okay. I I saw, I like the, the fact that you use them. Uh, um, when you don't have anything, you are coming from nowhere, you're working hard, you must believe in yourself first. Yes. And then you can grow, you can trust in your process. You can trust in the process, yes. Yes, but as long as you have that mindset that you want to do something, you'll be able to do it. We'll be able to do it. We'll climb our mountain. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Very much. Okay. Thank you for the message. It has really been a good message and very touching. Yes. And then very, very wholesome and very uplifting. So it has been a great message. Thank what you so much. No, just to see the journey and to see the process and how unwavering faith and commitment to God has, has been such a fundamental uh, aspect of, of, of your life and how that has now led to you doing well and how this and how if we follow the same principles it can also result in our lives being improved and how we can also use the principles to become better people and uh to be a great example in society so that has been very good thank you very much okay we are going to end there until we meet another time i'm saying namaste stay blessed amen